Everybody always likes to make fun of me because I like Zenith. What they always say is, oh, you're the guy that likes Zenith. Which isn't very nice to say, considering a lot of people must like Zenith for them to still be in business. I don't understand why you're What's up, watch fam? It is Michael, and this video is sponsored by Watch Shells. If your watches are getting scratched or you're scared of getting them scratched, especially your Rolexes, check out Watch Shells. More on them later. Let me tell you something, YouTube. Christian is in Geneva. He's long gone. He can't stop me. Today's a video for the boys, the Zenith boys, that is, and no one else. I understand this video will probably get no views. No one will care about it, and... That's all right. That's all right by me. I just feel like sometimes we need to talk about Zenith because to me, honestly, if there was Christian like six years ago, which was like this 19 year old kid that was like, you have to find value props and watch blah, blah, blah. I think Zenith would be the brand that he would be talking about. Zenith of 2020s. And then this future Christian would be in like the 2060s trying to sell you vintage Zeniths that I wore. And he would tell you the story of the vintage Zeniths that I wore and how beautiful the custard loom is and all that stuff. But either way, Zenith has some fantastic new releases. They have one that is incredibly odd. We'll go over that one first. But I think Zenith is a slept on brand and they're expensive. But the nice part about a slept on brand is they are expensive at retail, not expensive on the secondary market. So yeah, I think Zenith is a fantastic deal. If you don't go on Zenith a lot, check out their website, look at the Chronomaster originals, look at the other Chronomasters, look at the Defies, they use ceramic and titanium, like it's nobody's business, and we'll get into why Zenith does that. This is kind of just a Zenith love letter. But they have so many fantastic watches. Also, one of my actual grails, Zenith El Primero Final Edition for Timeless. There's only 38 of them made. It's really a Chronomaster original with a blue, then a gray, than a red dial. I think that's fantastic. I found this one, there's only one on Chrono24. It was going for much less than it's going for now. I think they raised the price, but such a cool watch. Sorry f about that horn of hair coming from my head. Also, sorry that the picture back there is crooked. Anyways though, let's get into the new releases and chat about this. <laughs> Okay, so first up is this incredibly weird watch. I will, Mike, do, Mike, editor Mike, not me, Mike, don't show a photo of this yet. Let me read you the description. A modern reinterpretation of the first Defy wristwatch model from 1969, crafted in a robust octagonal matte finished titanium case with a 14-sided bezel and paired with a titanium ladder bracelet. That, believe it or not, is an accurate description of what that watch is an octagonal case with a 14-sided bezel. That is 22 cuts in the case, and it looks as weird as you could possibly imagine. For some reason, this watch is incredibly water-resistant. It's more water-resistant than a Submariner. Sorry, I, it is the same as the Submariner. It's not more. For some reason, I was thinking it's 200 meters water resistance, but three and three. So it's matched to a Submariner, and it doesn't come with a diving bezel, and... I have no idea what this watch is for. I do know, obviously, that Zenith's whole thing, the big thing about Zenith, was obviously the El Primero, which we'll get into in a second, because there's a funny story about the El Primero, but also just the concept of Defy in general, which I really, really like. A lot of you said the Bubble OP that just got released is very ugly. I like to find watches that I think are weird and different. A lot of the times, you know, just like me, a lot of the times what happens though is when I get a watch that's weird and different, I'm like, ew, this is so weird and different than what I'm used to, I hate it. But when it hits, it hits. And I will say the Zenith Revival Shadow Chronomaster, all of my friends that I was pitching it to, I was like, I think I might get this watch, were like, that's eh, kind of ugly, it's, you know, it's not this, it's not that. Now Christian's saying, this is one of the greatest chronographs of this generation. So I, th I think sometimes I hit it right, sometimes I miss it. So yeah, Mike, you could show the watch. This is an incredibly weird looking watch. 37 millimeters, the lugs go tiny, 13.6 millimeters thick, 300 meters water resistance. And then on top of all of that, this Zenith has a ladder bracelet, which apparently Zenith was not going to reintroduce even in their heritage line. I don't know if that's 100% true or not, but they said they weren't going to reintroduce it, but Zenith fans wanted the ladder bracelet so bad back on Zenith watches because it's part of history for Zenith 
that they ended up doing it. So a ladder bracelet, picture an oyster bracelet with every other center link removed, so you see bare skin. That makes a lot of sense, considering that Zenith is very well known for the El Primero. Maybe that, you know, is kind of like the metal version of a rally strap or something like that. Either way, it's very weird. I haven't handled one or seen one, but they seem cool. What I have seen and handled and am wearing is the exact same material that this watch is made out of, and I love it. This is sandblasted grade five titanium, grade five versus grade two. Short explanation, because I don't know the long explanation, is that grade five is a lot harder. I'll do some research later and figure it out, but it's a lot stronger, a lot more durable. That's what you expect to get on a $9,000 watch, and in this case, a $7,400 watch. The case material is really one of the best parts. So it's incredibly light, has a very, very cool dark color, and the complete sandblasted look is very, very cool. So I really, I want the band on this watch, the titanium band. I don't know if you can get it for the Defy, but I'm gonna find out, so I will let you know. Either way, I will admit, as much as I love Zenith, I will probably never be interested in getting this watch. It's going for $7,400 now, I would assume, on the secondary market, it's gonna go for three or four, like, within the year. Could be totally wrong, who knows. But the only thing I really do like about this watch is the crown, I think is beautiful. And I really like that it sits flush against the side of the watch, obviously, because this has like 60 sides to it. It's beautiful. This video is brought to you by Watch Shells. Do you have a new Rolex or just a different watch that you don't want to get scratched up? Well then, Watch Shells is the place to go. Watch Shells is an invisible film that you can put on your watch, both on the bracelet or on the actual watch case. Over the sapphire, whatever you want to do, Watch Shells does it with incredibly precise cutouts of film that keep your watch from getting scratched. I actually put all the film on Rolly's GMT, gave it back to him, and he didn't even notice. I told him because he was wondering, obviously, why I had his most prized possession watch, and I said, oh, it was for a sponsor video. So you hardly notice it. Christian always tells the story where he was in line, I think, getting a coffee or something like that. Almond milk. Christian is lactose intolerant. But a guy walked up to him and said, hey, Christian, I love the channel. What do you think of my watch? showed his Rolex GMT to Christian. Christian put it on, said, fantastic watch. And then the guy said, did you see that there's a protective coating on it? Christian didn't see it. Very cool, very low key. So obviously when you think about this, you probably think about it like a screen protector on your phone. It's basically like that, but on steroids. I've put it on a watch, like I said. The film is a lot beefier. The corners are rounded so it doesn't come off of your watch easy. It's very water resistant. It doesn't yellow in the light. You can remove it if you need to, but it's also incredibly easy to apply. And Watch Shells gives you an entire application kit that makes it very, very easy. So I highly suggest you check out Watch Shells. They have a bunch of reviews on their website and they have a lot of before and after pictures of what the watches look like after Watch Shells are applied. So if you have AP, Longa, Blancpain, Breguet, Cartier, Hublot, IWC, JLC, Omega, Panerai, Paddock, Piaget, Richard Mille, Rolex, Tudor, VC, Zenith, I highly suggest you check them out. Thank you Watch Shells for making this video possible. Next up, which is Interesting, this is like, it's kind of right in the line of an homage, an alternative, whatever you want to call it. It's a little bit close to a certain very famous watch that rhymes with Wok Won Wat. So you might not like that. I think it's pretty cool actually, but this is the Pilot Automatic. It comes in ceramic and steel. Ceramic is very cool. That's really what I love about Zenith. It comes in ceramic and steel, not gold and steel. They always do something fun. But this watch obviously is an alternative kind of to IWC, if you want. It's a pilot watch, big pilot watch, 40 millimeters. I think it's very striking, actually. I'd really like to own this watch. I'd prefer if it was 38 or 37, but there's no use in me saying that. I just have a small wrist. Some of you are probably glad it's in 40. But I think it's really beautiful. I, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what that little line did above the date at six. I was like, I thought it was for water, like if it would let you know if water got into the watch or if pressure was changing really fast, it would turn red or something. It's actually just an indice. It's uh, the six indice. So that's that. I do think that was a weird choice for sure, but nothing that really takes away from the watch. Also, the only other feedback that I saw about this watch that I agree with is that the date looks incredibly small. They could have made it much larger, especially considering the next watch we'll talk about, but all in all, I think it's great. And like I said, 
it looks like an Aquanaut, the one in steel. And it's really, I think it's just the bezel, the brushed bezel. Looks strikingly similar to a paddock design. Maybe not just the Aquanaut, maybe a little Nautilus too. I, I know I'm riding the line here a lot, but I think that looks beautiful. I really, really like that. So something to check out. Okay, so now the grand finale. This is the Pilot Big Date Flyback Chronograph, which is awesome for many, many, many reasons, but one of them is just the fact that it uses the El Primero movement. This is the new El Primero 3652. The articles that I read said they don't have enough information about the movement to talk about it yet, but the history of the El Primero movement is great. You should definitely read it or look it up because there is a big race. Obviously, there's been chronographs for a very long time, but not automatic chronographs for a very long time. So there is a race to see who can make the first automatic chronograph. Obviously, it would be very important and very popular, whoever can do it. So Zenith, being the very confident and defying brand that they are, said, we can do it, and we can do it first. So we'll name our movement the El Primero, the first. And then they didn't finish first. They didn't get their chronograph out to market first. And I love that. That is just, obviously, yeah, now it's the best, the first, whatever it may be. But I just love that story. The confidence is unreal. It's like if I name my son the president, and then he worked as an accountant. That would have been awesome. But either way, this watch sits at an interesting position. Obviously, as Double Sapphire Sandwich Speedmaster, I think is 7,200. A Daytona is like 15,000. You also can't get a Daytona. This is also, well, we'll get to retail in a second, but it sits right in the middle of, I could get a Speedmaster, an iconic watch, or I could go a little higher and get a Daytona if I wait on the waiting list for 10 years. Or I could get this watch, obviously, or anything else in the Zenith line. And I find that really interesting because this is, a, you know, it really even has the Speedmaster seconds hand, but this is a very unique design. It's beautiful. You can get it in ceramic, which is crazy. I think the crowns that Zenith uses are amazing. It's a very striking watch. But besides that, the movement has a bunch of cool history. This watch is also two things. One, it has a big date function. So a big date at the bottom, as you can see, with that six o'clock line that we all know and love. And Zenith says that it's an instantaneous jump. So on 12, those discs will spin to the date and stabilize and 0.02 seconds and this is also a flyback chronograph so if you don't know what that is obviously a chronograph you start then you stop and then you have a decision out of your hands do I want to continue timing or do I want to stop again and reset the chronograph that's your chronograph decision list nothing crazy but with a flyback if your chronograph is running you could restart the chronograph and basically just keep it going down so it's good for I don't know, rapid timing or something like that. I usually use my chronograph to time how long I have to keep pasta in the pot in order for it to be al dente, which I don't usually need to rapidly restart the chronograph for. But still, very cool. And you can get this in steel for 11.5, which I'm starting to sound like a Zenith ad. I promise I'm not. But you get it for 11.5 or ceramic for 13.5 at retail. I don't know what this would go for after, but if these aren't limited production, I would say eight, maybe, nine, maybe which to me just, yeah, I'm talking about in ceramic, which to me seems just like, it's a fantastic watch. It's beautiful. Either way though, that's what Zenith released. I highly suggest you check out Zenith. This video, like I said, has been for the boys, the Zenith boys and the Zenith girls and anybody else that likes Zenith, but I highly suggest you check them out. Let's get this brand popular. Let's double the value of my watch and then I'll sell it and never talk about Zenith again. Just kidding, obviously. Thank you so much for watching this video. Christian will be back very, very soon. We'll get back to our usual talking and I will see you all on the flippity flip.